Hi, Year 6. Welcome to Tuesday's Maths lesson. Um, today we're going to be having a look at um, algebra, but before we get into the main part of our lesson, um, as usual, we have got our arithmetic questions. Now, these questions are the same questions as yesterday, but we've just, just with different numbers. So if you are struggling on one, try to think back to how you solved that question yesterday. I'd like you to pause the video now and have a go at these questions. Okay, um, for question one, before we could um, solve question one, we had to make the denominators the same. So, um, three quarters, we had to convert the denominators um, to be twelfths. So we had to ask ourselves, what do we times four by to get twelve? We times it by three. So we had to do the same on the top. So we ended up with 9 twelfths take away 1 twelfth. So our answer for number one was 8 twelfths. Question two, um, 20 times 70. We do 2 times 7 and then put two zeros on the end of our answer because there are two zeros um, in our question. So 2 times 7 is 14 and we want two zeros on the end. So our answer is 1,400. Question 3, we're multiplying by 100. So we need to move the digits two places to the left. So if I, um, I've got 62.3. Um, if I move my six one place, it ends up in the hundreds column, but if I move it two places, it ends up in the thousands column. So my answer is 6,230. Question four, um, this is a question that I think you would have found most tricky yesterday. Hopefully you've remembered how to do it. The first step is to find what 1% of 640 is. Um, to find 1%, I've got to divide by 100. So I move my digits two places to the right. So my 6 ends up in my 1s column, my 4 ends up in my 10s column. So 1% of 640 is 6.4. And I would write that down, make a note of that. Um, the question doesn't ask me what 1% is, so it asks me what 21% is. So then I need to do 6.4 times by 21. And I do that as a long multiplication. Setting it out exactly as I've set mine out on the screen. Um, so 1 times 4 is 4. 1 times 6 is 6. Remember my golden rule when I go down onto that second line, which is a zero. Two times four is eight. Two times six is 12. And then I add the digits together. Four add zero is four. Six add eight gives me 14. Carry my one. Two add one is three. And one add nothing is one. And finally, I've got to remember my decimal point. And remember that decimal point drops all the way down from the question, all the way down into the answer. So 21% of 640 is 134.4. OK, um, question five, we've got a fraction times by a whole number. Um, the way I like to remember it is T for times, T for top number. So the top number is the one that's going to change. The denominator is not going to change. So that denominator stays as 4. And on the top, I do 1 times 4. It gives me 4 on the top. OK. 4 fourths. You might notice 4 fourths is the same as a whole. So either of those answers is fine. Question 6. Um, a half divided by 3. Um, when I'm dividing a fraction by a whole number, I like to remember D for divide and um, D for denominator. So um, my numerator stays the same. My one on the top stays the same. And all I do on the bottom is two times three. So two times three is six. So my answer is one six. Stretch questions. Question one, the answer is 274,469. And question two, the answer is 67.
Okay, Year 6. Um, daily times table practice then. I'd like you to time yourself for a minute and have a go at the times tables on the screen. You have to pause the video now and do that. All right, then Year 6. Hopefully you are now ready to go into the main part of our lesson. So, um, today and tomorrow we're going to be looking at using algebra. Um, now, you might have heard the word algebra before. You might have heard, if you've got siblings in secondary school, you might have heard them complaining about how much they hate algebra. But actually, um, algebra isn't that tricky, okay? It's just an area of maths where we use letters to represent numbers. So instead of using a number or a question mark, we might take that out and use a letter. So um, this morning we're going to be looking at algebraic formulas or algebraic rules. So um, looking at the purple box down here, I've got a question and it says n equals 5 and I need to solve 2n. Okay, it looks a bit complicated, but actually where you get um, a number and a letter next to each other, that means times or lots of. So it's saying what is two lots of n? Well, n is 5. What's two lots of 5? Okay, two lots of 5 is 10. So where it says 2n, all it's asking is two lots of or two times. Okay. Um, and we just put the number into the sequence. So 2 times 5 is 10. Next question, slightly trickier, says 2n plus 6. So it's wanting to know 2 lots of 5 and 6. Okay, well n is 5, 2 lots of 5 is 10, and 6 gives me 16. Okay, question 3, it says 3n, so it's asking 3 lots of n. Again, n equals 5, so 3 lots of 5 is 15. Take away 8 and give you the answer 7. Okay. It doesn't always have to be N. In algebra, it could be any letter. Sometimes it might be A, sometimes it might be X, sometimes it might be B. Um, it can be any letter. So the next three questions, this time we've used the letter P. doesn't make any difference, though. So it says here for these questions, P equals 11. So question one, what are six lots of P? 6P, so 6 times P, 6 times 11, 66. Okay, do you want to pause the video now and have a go at question two and three here for me? Okay, hopefully you've had a go. Um, question two, 2P, two so two lots of 11, so two lots of 11 is 22. Add my 7 gives me the answer 29. Next I've got 5 lots of P take away 14. Well 5 lots of 11 is 55. Take away my 14 should have given me 41. Okay so all I'm doing is I'm taking the value that they've given and I'm substituting it into that formula. Ooh, didn't mean to do that. Um, okay then, Year 6, I'm going to reveal the fluency questions and I'd like you to have a go at doing these fluency questions in your own time then. So if you pause the video now, um, there are four different sections. So first of all, you're using the idea that T equals 9, then second section, M equals 5, third section, G equals 4, and the last section, you've got A and B, but I think you'll be okay with that. So pause the video now and have a go. Okay, um, for number one then, um, two lots of T, you should have got the answer 18. Um, number two, three lots of T, take away two, you should have got the answer 25. Number three, you should have got the answer 39. Number four, you should have got the answer 20. Number five, you should have got the answer 32. Number six is 29. Number 7 is 13, number 8 is 35, and number 9 is 12. 
Okay, for number 10, it was slightly trickier just because you had two letters to deal with here, but I think you could have done it. So A is 3, B equals 7, so A add B equals 10. Okay, number 11, two lots of A was 6, plus three lots of B was 21, so 6 add 21, gave 27. And number 12, um, four lots of B, which was 28, take away two lots of A, which was 6, so it gave the answer 22. Okay. For our problem solving today, um, which again is on maths.co.uk, um, we're still going to be looking at formulas, but this time, rather than it just being straightforward number formulas, we've got some worded problems. Um, so the first question we'll have a look at now. So Maria bakes cakes and sells them in bags. She uses this formula to work out how much to charge for one bag of cakes. The cost equals the number of take cakes times 20p, add 15p for a bag. How much will a bag of 12 cakes cost? OK, when you first look at that question, it sounds like a lot of words and it looks really, really complicated to solve. But all we've got to do is we've got to put this number into that formula. So. Um, the cost, that's what we're trying to work out. That, so we're trying to work out the cost. And to do that, we need the number of cakes times 20p plus 15. Well, we know the number of cakes. The number of cakes is 12. They've told us that in the question. So we've got 12 cakes times 20 and plus 15. And if we do... Sorry, it should be 15. If we do all of that, then it's going to tell us the cost. Because we've got cost equals number of cakes, which is 12, times 20 plus 15. So the first step I'm going to do then is 12 times 20. Well, I can do 12 times 2 and add a 0, can't I? So 12 times 2 is 24. Add my 15. So... 12 times 4, 12, sorry, 12 times 2 is 24, plus my 0 on the end is 240. So I've got 240, add my 15, gives me 255. So the cost then is 255 pence, because here, my, in my formula, I was dealing in pence. Now, the only slight problem is the question asks for my answer in pounds. So the cost isn't 255 pounds, it's 255 pence. I just need to change that into pounds, so it's two pound 55. So all I'm doing is putting that information that they gave me into the question into the formula that they've given me. We'll have another look, um, a, a look at a second one now. So here is the rule that an electrician uses to work out how much to charge a customer. So again, we've got the cost. So the cost in pounds equals 25 times hours worked plus 55. The electrician takes three hours to replace some electrical cable and some sockets. Use the rule to work out how much the electrician should charge. So again, we're trying to find out the cost. They've given us 25 times the number of hours worked. Well, he worked three hours. So, I'm going to copy out that formula again. We've got 25 times 3 add 55. Okay, so first of all, I've got to do 25 times 3. 25 times 3, if I count up in 25s, 25, 50, 75. OK, so I've got 75 add 55. 75 add 55. I might be able to do it in my head. If I can't, I can always do a column addition. Five add five gives me 10. Seven add five gives me 12. Add my one gives me 13. Carry my one, 130. So this time it was cost in pounds. My answer is in pounds. So the electrician needs to charge 130 pounds. So I'm just taking the information they've given me in the question and putting it into that formula. 
There's another question underneath then, Year 6. Um, that final question that's on the screen. I'd like you to have a read of that final question, this one here. Um, pause the video and have a go at that question yourself. Okay, hopefully you've had a go at this question. This is a real formula for cooking a chicken. Um, so they love a question like this um, on a test paper. Here is a rule for the time it takes to cook a chicken. Cooking time equals 20 minutes plus an extra 40 minutes for each kilogram. How many minutes will it take to cook three kilograms of chicken? Okay, so we want to know the time. We've got 20 minutes plus 40 minutes for each kilogram. So 20 minutes plus the 40 for each kilogram. Well, we've got three kilograms, so we need to do 40 times three, three lots of 40, which is 120. So 20 plus 120 gives me 140. So it would take 140 minutes to cook a three kilogram chicken. OK, um, the kind of questions you're going to get on maths.co.uk today will be a mixture of fluency questions or a little bit like this, but also some problem question solving questions that look a little bit like this. OK, and um, once again, there is a stretch on maths.co.uk. Don't feel like you have to do it, but if you are wanting to challenge yourself um, a little bit more, there are some stretch questions on there again today. And I think they are quite tricky. So. Um, these are some examples of what the stretch questions will look like on maths.co.uk. Um, so a theme park sells tickets online. Each ticket costs £24 and there are, is a £3 charge for buying the tickets. Well, you've got to choose the best formula or the correct formula to calculate that. So we've got to think really carefully about this. Um, a theme park sells tickets online. Each ticket is £24 plus there is a charge of £3 for buying tickets, like a booking fee if you like. So we're going to look at these formulas and think about which one the best one is going to be. So if we look at them really carefully. Okay, I know it's going to be this one. Okay, the number of tickets times by 24. So, for example, if I wanted to buy um, four tickets for the for the people in my family, I would do number of tickets four times by 24. So I've got to spend £24 on each ticket. Plus, I'm going to have to pay that £3 booking fee as well at the end. So it has to be this formula. OK. Um, the next question, Ev had £10. He gave some money away. Which formula um, shows how much money Dev has left? It says A is the amount of money in pounds that Dev gave away. Pause the video and see if you can work out which is the correct answer. OK, hopefully you spotted it's answer four here. OK, Dev had £10, so he started off with £10. He gave some money away and the amount of money he gave away we're calling A. OK, so £10, take away the money he gave away, take away A, so it has to be that formula. OK, if I've lost you a little bit at the end there, don't worry too much. As I said, those are the stretch questions on maths.co.uk today. OK, Year 6, that's all from me. And um, Remember, if you've got any problems, you can tune into the check-in calls um, and myself and Mr Manns can try and help you out with any questions. All right.